Hello and welcome to Cory Loses for the beginning of a brand new preview playthrough in Thrawn's Revenge 3.3, the final preview playthrough as we head into the release which will be happening in a couple short weeks on August 15th. In this playthrough we're going to be playing as the Galactic Empire and we're going to be starting thanks to the poll results or based on the poll results in Thrawn's era. So I'm going to be doing something I haven't done in quite some time and playing the large map known Galaxy Large, so this will probably be the longest campaign we've done on the channel. So uh, we're going to be going for the Shipyard Victory mode, or Victory Condition, but even that we're going to need to clean up a lot of territory. So let's get started. I'm going to change the game to Admiral Difficulty once we're actually in-game, and then maybe at some point in it I'll, I'll change to, to Cruel, but uh, we'll see how, how we're doing. Uh, yeah, so... The, one of the biggest goals in this playthrough is going to be to look at some of the Dark Empire and regime changes, so stuff like the World Devastators, which weren't in in the prior Empire playthrough we did. But uh, before we get started on that, we are going to take a look at some of our territory once we've finished loading in here. Uh, so we've got a good chunk of the north. we got like a, a line of territory from just the northern edge of the core up through to the northeast of the galaxy. There are 160 planets. 160? 150? What, what, I, a number. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to give it a second. No, I'm not going to give it a second for Thrawn spawning. We're, we're going to do this first. Let's turn on all our little filters and see what we got. So, one of the things that's going to be kind of nice is that the Panastar alignment will be a good early target for integration for us. And the Ariadu Authority in the core is probably going to be another one. Uh, so it actually won't be that far off for us to get uh, Dark Empire. Because we're, we're kind of at a point where a lot of the Imperials are falling apart. So that, that's going to be that's going to be good for us. So let's uh, let's let Thrawn come in and say hi. I've prepared the fleet. It's time to begin our reconquest of rebel worlds and bring peace back to the galaxy to prepare for what's to come. Their military abilities are undeniable, but their chances for long-term stability are non-existent. So we are going to be doing the tier 3 and 4 shipyard conquering victory condition that is set up in here. And because of how the the game handles loading the galactic conquest... It, not, I, I said loading, so I went to load game. We're going to go to options, turn to admiral... Uh, Hopefully that's a thing that the game developers are able to fix when you load into a new Galactic Conquest using a story event like we do to have all the different starting maps uh, for the different eras. Uh, that's why the difficulty gets reset. But you can see it changed to Admiral up there now. We are in 9ABY. We got Thrawn there. And one of the things that I do for these preview playthroughs is for people who are patrons, channel members here on YouTube or Twitch subs, they're able to name a ship that I use in the playthrough, and that's what all these little guys are. And I, I think I need to reorder the the files so that I can see the structures. But we are going to start off with some construction, I think. We got a decent infrastructure score, so we don't need to go straight into uh, straight into infrastructure building. So let's take small but mighty. So right. Sorry, I had to check something there. So we got small but mighty. We have Empire Rage, we have M7 Lancer, Wild Woody, Wild Woody, and Pinpointer. So I'm going to be going for a lot of the smaller ships at first. Uh, we're going to be pairing them with Thrawn. So we will get Defense for Darkness, Striking at the Core, Dak Cruiser, and I'm going to get It's Fine. As for our smaller ship fleet here, actually, I'll, we'll get into fine and Salvador Dali. Production. All right. So our first step is not going to be to go towards the core. It's going to go. It's going to be going to Bill Bringy here, and we got hypervelocity gun. We're fully built up on Bill Bringy. That's good. Uh, Koruleg can be a good defensible position for us as well. I don't know about Yinkor. But we don't have many better options at this moment. So, let's see. I am going to move some of these ships World out to our borders. 
Because we want to make sure we have all those borders protected. Ariadu has taken Saw Beacon, which we'll, we'll see some back and forth on that. Uh, let's actually check out the legitimacy setup here. 20% for Greater Maldrud, 16% for Ariadu, Penistar is 23%, and we have 39%. So as we integrate, things will be going great. And Ithor is kind of sitting there looking delicious. Heading out, sir. Navigating to coordinate. But let's uh let's combine some of these fleets. And we're gonna use Thrawn, take uh take Borosk, and just uh waltz our way into Pentastar alignment victory. Okay, they took Adamar. I don't I don't want them to do that. Uh that might be a little too small of a fleet, but uh we'll 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 see if we can if we can get in there. I'll probably sell some of the default starting forces over the course of the campaign and go towards more of the, the patron units. If you do want to get a patron unit in or a named unit into the campaign, there's a link in the description with uh, all the instructions on how that works. But it's not something that's in the released version of the mod, it's just a thing that I do for the playthroughs as a way to thank the people who make it possible for me to keep uh, putting out these videos as my full-time job. So always very appreciated. All right, what do we got here for Mr. Thrawn? Just a couple structures, a nice easy one to start Thrawn off on. I see. So Thrawn, we will keep Niles Ferry in reserve. We don't need a, uh, we don't need the boarding. Throw the Tector confirm. in. We have Striking at the Core. We have the Cruiser. We have Defense for Darkness. Let's put in these Dreadnoughts over here to help our Tector, because we want to get those garrisons Thrawn first. Thrawn, ready. stay on that one. And if they got some missiles, let's put in Empire Rage, Small but Mighty, and M7. Because it seems like they're also going to have some bombers. Uh, which also means we probably want Fenir and Kreb. So we got double fighter heroes on this fleet. I don't like how much damage they are putting out onto you. Ooh, yikes. Alright, we'll have to rebuild you. Yeah, the Buccaneers do hurt. I didn't, uh, didn't see the Buccaneer was there. That's why we need the... Uh, that's why we need our fleet tenders for them. All right. Ties reporting in. Need to need to get serious. This is it's a uh, easy station battle. We now. don't need to be losing the ships. You want. IPV reporting. Ready Thrawn, for the kill. just uh, just go straight in for, for that structure. For the shipyard. And Is am I recording audio? That that's always a good thing to check. It, we're recording audio. We're we're all good. Go all right. Power to weapons. This will at least cut them off from Adamar, which is where it seems like part of their fleet ended up, where the fleet that would have been here ended up, because they did just take the neighboring planet, which is pretty lucky for us. But they're probably not going to be super happy with it. Uh, Harder weapons on that. Like, there were definitely more ships in that little stack than I was thinking from the garrisons. And I honestly, I thought the, the strike cruisers would have been farther away, or far enough away, that they'd possibly go for the tactor first, but look, it happens. So we did lose defense for darkness, but we'll, we'll rebuild it. It'll get better. And I think we do want to spend some money on... Uh, on some taxing. So, Arinda, you're not being taxed right now. Or Cantrell, you're not being taxed right now. Or, Fader, are you? No. Building started. So we want to go for the planets that are the highest opportunity for us. What's your income from? 250 plus the trade routes. Okay. So we do have 
I think most of our trade route or trade ports already posted, so that's where a good chunk of our money's coming from right now. But the others are not. On my way, sir. So let's Understood. get you guys in with Thrawn, like we like we promised. We're going to Borosk, and what is that connected to? That's still Bill Bringy. That's still our planet. Uh, you have a hypervelocity gun, I assume. Yeah, we already checked you. That's the one we checked. So I don't need to assume. Karita doesn't. Korulag doesn't. Okay, so I think we'll move you Black down here. And... It's about as good as we're going to be able to do right now. Really, this area, we don't have to worry about as many attacks from right now because the New Republic is in there, but what are they going to do? About. The Hapens are a bigger threat right now. Until the Hapens consolidate some of that territory, this will be kind of a dead zone for us for defense. So we only need to worry about stuff coming in a bit further north, probably from the CSA. So we'll take that risk. Confirmed. We'll go over here because like, we do have the... We do have the, the units around to defend that part. We'll probably go for the CSA later. But I might actually sell some of our units, some of our ground units. Just so I can build a few more of the patron units. Which is, I'm not doing anything very smart right now. But normally what I do is set up uh, all these units to spawn as my starting units. But... I figured I wouldn't do that right now, so I turn the core, I cup, I'm not saying ICUP, you won't get me to say that, oh wait I did, uh, do we have anyone with stealth, any spying right now, I don't think the starting roster does, but we can invade, well you have stealth to invade, but I don't think you can spy, so we'll get Borosk, And I do think the, the big focus has to be on the Penistar alignment. Like, we have to knock that out before we really go anywhere else. So get on up there. And let's get some help for you. Some nice artillery. Pavel can go the other direction. And I think this can hit both of the landing zones from this position. It can definitely hit that one. So we'll get that one started. Reporting. You're going to go with Joris. Awaiting and Kabul, you're going to go up there. I'm Awaiting actually going to get some of the infantry Moving to go out. with Kabul as well. Just while we wait for the other ATSTs to spawn in. Because Kabul can drop some. Right. Yes, sir. I still want to make sure he doesn't. Ready I don't lose an AT, -AT hero for. Setting him alone. And we'll get some hover hover tanks. Advancing. Because this is a map with a good amount of water. And that means that having them be able to go around and maybe even nope, they can't get into the base that way. So never mind that. Uh are you a mercenary outfitter? Ready. Okay, we're gonna capture the mercenary outfitter. Awaiting orders. Actually go Scanning forward air. and you're gonna drop some people. Deploying stormtroopers. We do also have the the indicators for how much pop cap you're going to get from the landing zones. Okay, uh, we need to send guys up as fast as possible. All right, yes sir. You're coming out. Good job, guys. Roger. Getting your company, and now run over and capture those. Reporting in. All right, I don't want to get too far into the base without. Reporting in enough support it's like Joris can You're annihilate those buildings but I don't know what structures they have because I did not feel like scouting before this one I don't want to pay the credits for that okay, just yet we're still we're gonna be working on a uh, building up a nice little economy luckily the Empire is pretty healthy at this point so if I can send those vehicles over there it's probably easiest to get uh into the base from this side with anything you want to land Right, they have a tax agency, heavy vehicle factory, okay, zap them, see if we crash. It's really unfortunate, uh, beam weapons, I'm not sure why they're mostly not moving there. 
There we go. But yeah, so, not beam weapons, but uh, beam abilities in Empire at War have some, have some issues. Where for some people they'll work perfectly fine, but for others you'll see uh, with the super laser ability, with the uh, hack turret ability, and with force lightning, uh, the game can sometimes crash if you even just select a unit that does it, which is really annoying. It's like it's not a thing that happens for everyone, and even for people who it happens with, it doesn't happen consistently. So. We're often left either deciding to not use an ability that can be very useful, or having some portion of the player base have a crash that we can't do anything about. So if Petroglyph ever does another patch that's kind of near or on the top of my list, speaking of. Alright, unfortunate crash in, the, in our first ground battle here, but I'm back to almost where we were, except now we've got... Uh, we got them approaching a bit differently than they did in the first battle, so uh, I decided to record before we got to exactly where we were. But, oh, that's a lot of explosions that are going to happen there. But it uh, looks like we are carrying things okay here. We do have a bombing run again, so let's see, see if we end up in a luckier place. I'm going to just... this is my one. Oh, I can't have it. Okay, Joris, you are gonna kill this structure, and our bombers are coming in. So let's see. All right, if it wasn't that. It was just something else. Reporting in. But we've got basically the whole base. We've got all their units. Looks like things are going well for the Empire so far. We haven't killed any heroes yet, so I'm sure the comments will be overjoyed. There's still, I mean, there's still time left in the episode. There's still like 20, 30 minutes left in the episode. So, you never know. I could still easily get a hero killed. Easily. Intentionally, even. But I won't do it. I will, I will promise right now you're going to get through the rest of this episode. And there won't be a dead hero, System on my side at least. I'm, I'm gonna maybe kill one of the enemy heroes. But I don't think people will mind on that. Uh, let's see though, when we're taking over the Penistar alignment... What do we want the most? What do we want to hurt the most? Other than getting so close. I'm gonna actually use some of that for economic structures what's our what's our higher basis income let's get an iridonia tax agency because that's a lot of money terrace will probably be our next one and yeah that that seems right but maybe we'll maybe we'll do a quick little pop over to whatever they had on adamar which I'm a little bit worried about. I'm going to move the Ord Cantrell the fleet over here. Because I do want to defend Boros. But if we can course. just uh, drop on over to Adamar, take Adamar, and then... Oh, we got our next little influx of cash. We've got a low upkeep right now, which I kind of want to keep until we have... Uh, until we have our economy rolling a little bit better. 250 is enough to be worth a tax agency, but let's see. Economy, base credits. Axilla. We want Axilla. You are going to get a tax agency. For I'm following my own video's advice. We're getting a we're getting we're using the the layout. 250, ooh, 400 quarter leg. How are you doing? You do not have anything yet. Bill Bringy is not going to be one. So Qtrick is looking like as a 300, the next best one. Iridonia, we're already doing. I think that's all of our... Oh, I've been looking at the wrong column. Uh, Axilla, 400. Coralag, 400. 
Iridonia 400. So Feta is a good one. Qtrick, Telos, Terrus. Okay. Oop, what the? Hello? Oh, that, okay, that was very weird. Uh, I guess it didn't like me selecting planets that way. Ooh. Ooh. Well, Ibdikit, so this guy, he's got a different ship than he used to. But uh, I, I guess I should explain what, I'm, what I was doing there. So with your tax agencies, you always want to build them on the planets with the highest base income. You want to prioritize that way, because the way the tax agencies work is they will double the planet's base income. And if you build more than one, then so each one drops your influence by two. So with influence of six, that'll bring us down to four. You don't want to go below that, even though you could build more tax agencies, because then the planet will be upset with you and might do a little revolt. And if your planets are revolting, that's disgusting. But if we can we kill a comms... If we can kill a tag, tag, tag battlecruiser here... Ooh, this is... Choose your this would not be living up to my promise to not get any heroes killed, actually. Because you've got some enforcers... Some Vanitors. We have a lot of anti-fighter. We have two Star Destroyers, but that's not... I can't... Okay, I can't... I can't get too into the mythology of Thrawn here. I, I gotta... Prepare I gotta leave this fleet right. here. They're gonna want to reconnect, but... I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to make a... a big mistake with that early. If we combine the fleet that we just put onto... onto Borosk, we can definitely make some moves with that and I think that might be the right thing to do yeah I think I think it makes sense I was kind of thinking like do I want to wait until we have more of the, the patron units for it but I I think we can have one nice big battle before that happens so maybe let's get Karakadoodle do build in and if we keep our, our upkeep relatively low for the moment, then if you insist. we are going to make more money. Don't wanna, what are you taking? No, Wayland is just neutral. We're so let's the get these guys down to Karita. All right, Thrawn, you better win this one. If you don't win, I'm blaming you for it gonna be a long playthrough so there's gonna be plenty of other battles there they are blast them all right copy choose your reinforcements. Like we have a lot of anti-fighter not a lot we have a good amount of anti-fighter an okay amount of anti-fighter not to oversell it Indeed. okay Thrawn um, let's get Location some point confirmed. defense Advancing. in front of that Little guy. Order confirmed. Some tectors in front of our our man Thrawn here. Recursor. A VSD one. A VSD two. Maneuvering. Indicator. These two regular strike cruisers. Then we got it's fine. That's going to be healing that one. Salvador Dali also healing him. Then the cruiser striking at the core. And let's uh let's put in these other ones on that side. Then we can also arrange our Lancers strategically. So we're going to get Pinpointer, we're going to get Empire Rage, we're going to get M7 Lancer, Lancer Frigate, and Wild Woody. Along with just the, the regular carrot back there. Then Turfineer. Go up front, maybe I'll, I'll try to keep my eye on Beta. I should actually, I'm going to move Tur back. Okay, these guys are gonna go on that. Cruiser reporting. Form up. Interceptor squad reporting. Don't go too far. Closing on target in my sight. We want to make sure. Things don't get. I mean, I could try to board some of you. I don't. I don't know if that's gonna be the safest option. And as much as I'd like a land or. Venator. Excellent shot. I don't know if it's going to be safe for Niles. I made a promise 
that I wouldn't Attack get him killed, yes, along with the other Order, ones, sir. so Farrier, just get back there. Target critical. Alright. There's still a good chunk of other units coming in, and I need to, I need to focus that direction. Like that little clump of dreadnoughts is probably better off dreading right now. But Thrawn, I think, is fairly safe. So this guy used to be in a Praetor, but uh, we've been... With the changes to reduce the starting power for a lot of factions, even without those, that's a huge chunk of the faction's power. Uh, so we've been trying to remove our units. Oh, great, you guys moved up a lot. But we've been trying to reduce the, the starting power of the heroes as well, uh, like starting with the free Super Star Destroyer isn't a thing anymore for anyone. Uh, those are things that factions have to invest in, and we do want to take similar steps with battle cruisers in the future. With Super Star Destroyers, it was like easier, clear steps, and we can deal with other starting hero sets in the future, taking maybe a bit more investment uh, before you end up with those. Because Starting with a Praetor 2, it really limits what we can do with the rest of the faction. Because the the starting pop cap is usually on a small to medium map. You're probably talking 300 to 400 per faction. And there are some that are even less. So the, the Praetor ends up being basically an entire faction worth of power in one ship. And that's not ideal. But they do still have at least the battle cruiser. I just pressed the wrong button. Attack formation. We're being targeted. I still have no idea if uh, people end up preferring thumbnails that are like the renders or the, uh, the screenshots. So I don't know. Guys reporting in. I think, uh, I think renders for now, and then I'll, I'll reassess with the next playthroughs. Because for a long time, I've been streaming the episodes as I record them on Twitch. Uh, but for this and the CIS playthrough, we've uh, not just finished. I just finished it. You guys haven't finished watching it yet, because it's not fully out yet. But, uh, but I've recorded these offline. I'm not sure uh, if there's going to be a mix of that in the future, or if I'm going to go back to streaming. I'm going to give it some time to sit and see how people have felt about the last couple of playthroughs but we've got we've got a nice nice victory here we've killed a, uh, a hero we're gonna increase our odds at a legitimacy role with that which is always nice we're going to reduce their legitimacy with that which is also always nice because anything that's going to increase our legitimacy is gonna be helpful right now because that's gonna be what we're looking to increase in order to get to the Dark Empire regime. It's a bit easier to get into Dark Empire from Thrawn, which makes sense because it is the next chronological time period anyways, but with the other with the other Imperial factions being mostly destroyed by this point, what are they going to say about it? I guess it's harder for the other factions to form it, but for the Empire, it's easier. Maybe for the Penistar alignment as well, like if you're just in that corner, you can push out a little bit. Uh, so it's, it's probably not too bad for them either. We lost Wild Woody and Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser. We're going to get one of those back. And we'll be able to move... I guess we'll move them back in. But I'm just going to... I'm going to leave AVSD2 here. And I guess I'll leave Thrawn there. I may as well. I know he has the bombers. It's not like we're going to be using that fleet for anything in the, the next couple seconds. But I just want to get set up for this next ground battle. And what are we looking at legitimacy-wise? I should probably put in the information on like modifiers for your next roll, because there's some stuff that isn't fully documented for it right now, or isn't as clearly documented for it right now. Because, uh, like, yeah, there's the hero kill plus one legitimacy, and then that changes the roll on your next legitimacy roll. So it's, we're going to have a higher chance of getting a legitimacy group with our next planet we take. We're at 39%. Who has the next most? 21 versus 16 versus 22. 
So it's 22 on that. And they've got Starlight Station. They got Starlight Station Group just for... Uh, just for taking Adamar. Those lucky little... Okay, we want the... We want the Death Hawks in before I invade. So it's nice to have the air speeders. Okay, we're in. We're in. Is there anywhere else I want to get some taxes first, though? It's, uh, it was Coraleg we already got, I think. Yeah, Coraleg's already building one, Terrace. Then we were getting into the the 100, like 300, so... Q-Trick, oh, we're already doing one on Q-Trick. Axilla, we're already doing one. Selenon is probably an okay one for it, too. So, yeah, you don't have anything right now. Tangren, uh, is your base income really... Okay, it's just traders. Your base income is zero. I thought it was zero, and then it was throwing me off seeing it like that. Seeing it at 300, but that's just because it's really well connected. So, Telos, Tax Agency, Order Dama, you're also 250. Is that because of any trade ports? Nope. Tax Agency, Donovan. Trade ports? No. Guess what? Beginning tax Agency. You guessed right. All right. Now that we've stimulated the economy... Joris, go and stimulate some of these. Oh, look, we've even got another person to kill. Noda. Uh, okay, you got an ATAT. They've got a Nemesis gunship. That is something to be concerned about. But we're fighting on a map that is in no way related to any other sci fi franchise. Any any claims that that is. Anything like that is. They're false. Unverifiable. Ooh, let's go get the mine, actually. Or the. Yeah, abandoned mine. And I suppose I should put in the Death Hawks and an ATAT -AT in front. Because we don't want the Nemesis to just fly in and be like, hey, guess what? I'm going to kill you. They are getting a landing zone over there, so they're going to have a field base. The, the Pentastar Lyman actually has some... Some of the more interesting field bases, some of the more unique ones, because part of their faction design is that their their core buildable infantry isn't necessarily as good, but the they do have some specialized stuff in their field bases, or like just more niche access to it. Oh, look at that! That's beautiful. Awaiting your orders. You guys are gonna go up to there to help him. There we go. Deathhawks, you gotta help against that. Always be afraid of the nemesis. Nemesis. Alright, back off, back off, back off, back off. We got an ATAT -AT walking from the top of the hill here. I'm gonna. I'm kind of worried with how much is down there. Reporting. But we can go in get that infantry. So maybe I don't need to worry. No, we're we're actually we're fine. Let's back you off. Joris should be able to get in and make some nice infantry soup. I mean, I could also just uh, get some some converts on that. All right, you guys gotta. Reporting. Get up and support wish, them. Rook, can you come in and attack. do some other... Moving out. Yes, Commander. Commencing attack. Some Ready. other fun stuff for us? Alright, let's Moving get forward. I copy. And you're going to get to the point where you can attack that. We still do need to do some more, some more stuff with the field bases. Because uh, they... We haven't gone through and like planned out different functions for them or how we want to set up the different groups from them since their initial introduction, really. There's been some tweaking, including in this release, to make them more uh, more upfront and less in reserve for their garrisons, but there is still a bit more to be decided on that. Okay. There's Noda. He's like a drug, because we're going to say no to drugs. Awaiting orders. Ready to serve. That was terrible, actually. Okay, forget I said that. We're going to go for this next, next one. 
And all right. I'm here, sir. With Nota down, Copy. will be the supreme General. power in the galaxy universe. Turkin really had some big ambitions with that. Like, not just the galaxy. He wanted the whole universe. Okay, just zap, zip, zap, zap them. They're not going to be able to retreat anything out. We've got, uh, well, they do have that landing zone, but they're not going to get through there. Perfect. That is a second planet for us already. Enemy fleet going to Borosk. I am shocked. Not that shocked. Tactical oh, battle imminent. Not what I wanted to see. Did we actually... Did Tyrfenir die? Oh well. I was lying about my promise anyways. You can never be sure with those fighter heroes. Enemy has been spotted. Didn't even Lots notice. Um, this is a bad look for you. I guess they didn't see the, the fleet coming back. Gunboat here, sir. Come on. Weapons armed. Oh, come on. Come on, you can't do this to me. I was gonna kill you! Ultro, Ultro, my guy. Oh well. All right, we do need to build construction complete. that on here. And uh, hey, invasion commencing. They finished the structure like ready to have it. There we go. Siloom group unlocked. Sebastian Parnell says, I've split oceans of blood to main spilt oceans of blood to maintain the Emperor's peace, and I'm willing to spill oceans more for it. Of course, I shall support you. Constructing. Alright. So Siloom is our level one group. We got some new speeches and hollows for that. Uh, I'm gonna have to work on a thing to put in like a hologram or a, a holocron entry for the speeches, because we've had to, to cut them down quite a bit. They used to be quite long. We can move a, deep, a fleet to deep space to find the Katana fleet. That's uh, that's going to take a while. I hate to say it. You know, I'm going to sell these, and then, like, if they... If they get here, we'll... We'll do it, you know? We'll support them at that point. We'll fight what we can. But that's, that's going to be a tax agency for you. And what's Borosk's? looking like 250 we can do another tax agency there as well garki you are 100 Jagger minor 300 press felt 100 and troll is 400 but i'm kind of hoping for entrala as a uh as an integration if i'm being entirely honest all right let's get uh the great red dragon unit and i'm not officer drunk So we're going to try to get all these little ones. I'm going to hold off on building our upscaled probe droid and Hoth recreation, our HK probots, uh, until we're actually in Dark Empire. But we can get Wild Woody back. So we'll get a bit more of an anti-fighter. Thrawn, you're going to go hold, hold there. Fairy, are you going to stay in with them? So I don't know what my penance will be for losing a hero technically in, that, in the first episode. But... I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you want me to do to myself in the comments, and then I'll consider it. I'm going to sell some of those strike cruisers and get Defense for Darkness back. It gets a, it gets a reprieve, considering it, uh, it did die just a little bit. This is actually a bigger fleet than I need it to be, so I'm going to move Rasoon and probably Brandai as well into different locations. So Rasoon... You're going to go to Yinkor. And Brandi, you are going to go to Karita. We're moving out. Flank speed. Which we're also going to send that to Darius fleet too. Because like this is, this mess, we do need to monitor a little bit, but I, I think it's not going to go anywhere. The Havens have actually come out to Roman, which might in the long term be better for us. 
Because they're at least not going to be as aggressive as some of the other factions right off the bat. All right. Let's get you over there. What do we have? Oh, that was the Mercana Conquering. How did you manage that? So they're pushing right into the New Republic. If if the Greater Maldrude takes Liana, I'm going to start being proud of them on the one hand, but also disappointed. Uh, so we, we do have Delta Source on Coruscant. Delta Source, Commander, reporting all manner of valuable information right from the heart of the Rebels' fragile government. You don't have clearance to know the precise nature of our informant. It's a tree. But rest assured, I will pass along any useful knowledge that comes through the encrypted channels. So we can always see what's going on on Coruscant with Delta Source active. And that's really nice. But I'm actually, before checking any other stat, or checking anything else, let's check our, our overall government, or our overall galactic stats. We have 36 planets with 19%. Does anyone even really come close to us right now? How's the New Republic doing? Mandalorian clans, they've got three planets with 2%. Proud of them. Ariadu, 2 and 2. Penistar, 10 and 5. New Republic, 41 planets, 21%. So they're kind of, as you can probably assume, our next, the next big thing. Like, they're probably going to take the Huts pretty easily and the Corellians. Like, the Corellians have these planets in here, these planets down here. And I, I did a video yesterday on... Uh, What's come with the Hudson Corellians? They won't always be the same color as each other either. Uh, but color, faction colors are a bigger discussion than you'd think. Because there's so many factions and only so many colors in the galaxy. But Pref Spell... I don't think I want to take Pref Spell right now. Complete. I wouldn't mind taking Yega Minor. But I don't know if that's a, a reasonable ask at the moment. So, Adamar, you and you are both started. worthy of tax agencies. Building and we'll start working our way up towards structures. Space structures. So we need infrastructure structures. Hapen, Hapens are taking Argonar as well. Okay, they're coming. If they just go straight up to Liana for us, that'd be pretty sick. We don't know where the other Imperial leaders are, but we we have to just assume that they're doing the right thing for us. So Iridonia, I don't know why I've taken to building on Iridonia, but we're going to keep doing that. We're going to go ships, go burr, arc the quiver, unyielding pestilence. We want some nice carriers. I'm Unit actually going to build... Unit in oh, production. Oops. Well, Vehicle I already promised unyielding pestilence. We can do that on multiple planets. And we're starting to get our economy more in shape. So, Bilbringi, let's get our first ISD. Let's get no impotence unpunished. Unit. And I think it's probably appropriate to do a little bit of scouting. Well, let's get Siloom Group session. first. And on Feda, we'll get Artemisia Gentileschi. Vehicle in production. Escort carrier standing by. What's the actual? What are the heroes given? So it's just Parnell. Okay. Construction. So complete. you guys are going to go into Thrawn's fleet. That's going to be our complete. our first goal with these. And we'll swap out other stuff for them. And I don't think I need another IPV for it. But having more fighters and good anti-fighter is always nice in our own fleets. Uh, oh, you are, you're, in, you're not a soldier. Do we want to move anything else for it? Let's get the Precursor out. And one of the Star Destroyer, or one of the Dreadnoughts, not a Star Destroyer. Then Parnell. I what Parnell does. Parnell is... Super Transport. Okay, you're going to go with Thrawn. Yes, 
And I think we're gonna probably go for Presfo. Because I I do want to leave some defenses around. Because I don't want them to get the idea that they can just go into Borosk. So I'll probably pull out some of these ones. Now that we've got that a good amount move. of our own fleets in Tactical there. So if we go to Presbo and then maybe even into Entrala, like I want to take Entrala and Yega Minor. Because uh, I sighted. think Kane might be on Entrala right now. We'll probably take some of the, the other planets first, but. Alright, let's get these these guys in here. Coming about. Our VSDs. Strike cruisers. Another an ISD. Or a tector, rather. We're gonna get striking at the core. Okay, well, first, Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali. Thrawn. Consider it done. Then we want ships go burr. We want Arctic Quiver. We'll throw in Parnell to help. Uh, we want Monster Frigate. It's fine. And you guys focus on that a bit more. And Wild Woody, you're gonna protect back here. Empire Rage. M7. One, have something to report. Direct fire on the engines. Okay, I don't want the carriers to actually go in themselves. That would, be, that would be crazy. I want your fighters and bombers to go and kill everything else. Which means we also want a healing pestilence. Artemisia. Man, let's get some more defenses in there. Because you're not supposed to die. Striking at the core in there as well. Great Red Dragon. And the cruiser. You guys get in. You are not going to let anything bad happen to our command, our beautiful, sir. beautiful strike cruisers this time. Watch your back, squadron, standing by. All the bombers that exist, you're going in there. Ready for battle. He's headed your direction. Watch for every bomber in the world. I'm losing power. Got got some fighters on me. I'm ready okay, Thrawn has handled a lot of those little guys. We got the, the bulk cruiser, another another beautiful little box. There's a lot of the beautiful little boxes in, uh, in Star Wars. Okay, I don't want. I'm not going to go too far in. Oh, what's your traits? Slaver. Okay, so we're going to get some some money for this, too. If I put him with a World Devastator, then it's going to be like... It's going to be resources all over the place for killing these people. Don't think about the implications, though, too much. Go after the stragglers. Awaiting orders. Okay, that's two closing on target. Pursuing you. enemy forces. I got one. Intercepting. Getting a lock. Your Should be able to go Priority in for that. Is the laser and let's get some power weapons. Effect. You have need of Dropping. my skills. Target at maximum power. We'll probably still want to spend a little bit more money on infrastructure. But I do want to make sure that we're getting our fleet moving fast enough. There we go. 100 credits for that. Give me more credits. Give me more money. Oh well. Need to make sure we have Parnell for some of our some of our bigger battles. Well, that's, I think, a good victory to leave us off with for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it, even though I lied straight to your face by saying that Turfanir wouldn't die, even though uh, it seems like he kind of did a little bit. But we're going to keep going with more on the next episode. So thank you for watching. Hope you're looking forward to the playthrough, and hope to see you next time. Bye, everyone.